Hello, my name is Hazel King, and I am co-pastor of Green Faith Ministries International. Um, we're here tonight with several of my friends. We're all a part of the New Vision Faith Fellowship Retreat, Women's Retreat Committee for this year, 2014. Uh, we're here to talk about our theme and our concept for the retreat. It's called New Beginnings, and it's from uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Reads, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. So, Cynthia, can you tell us first uh, when and where the retreat will take place? Absolutely. The retreat is scheduled for August 8th, 9th, and 10th, 2014 at Cedar Lake's Ministry in Cedar Lake, Indiana. Wonderful retreat location, not too far from Chicago. Um, new beginnings. Exactly. We all like new beginnings. We all like starting things fresh and anew. Right. And who says that new beginnings has to start at a new year? It starts whenever we make up in our minds that we need to change. As women, we all take on a lot, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, Wear we do. many hats. Yes, we do. Many Absolutely. hats. And sometimes we just need to start afresh with something new so that we feel within ourselves that we still have and valued with all that's placed on us, what we need to do for God. Let's talk about the realities of our day-to-day -day existence. We're all bogged down in work, family. Some of us are taking care of elderly relatives. So how can we really refocus and rethink our lives and maximize the potential that God has given to God, what do you want me to do today? Yes. Because when I roll out of bed, my mind immediately becomes filled with a list that's too long of things that I think need to be done, I would like to do, and it's impossible for me to complete all of that in one day. And so I've noticed recently, I've been making a point to ask him, what do you want me to do today? What are your priorities? Because I'm having a hard time prioritizing all of those things. And when I ask him what his priorities are, my day flows a whole lot easier. We are all surrounded with stress of one sort or another. We don't have that space in our everyday lives where we can sit back and talk to God. Yes. So the retreat is necessary because we want to start afresh, but we don't have time to do it in our everyday lives. So what we do is we go to this retreat and we spend that one-on-one -on -one time with the Creator. If it's by the lake, if it's a bonfire, if it's in your room, you have that one-on-one -on -one time where you can talk to God because there's nobody else there. My children aren't there. My husband isn't there. My grandmother isn't there. You know, I'm praying for them, but at the same time, it's some time for me. Right. So the retreat is a place where you can begin again because you can truly talk to God. And simply put, there is nobody else there. All of those stresses are eliminated. So you kind of have no choice but to have that one-on-one -on -one time with God and to get your steps right on time. Because I was so excited and enjoyed, enjoyed the retreat so much last year. And there are none of those stresses. It is like a real break. Definitely the fellowship with the, the ladies and with the Lord. But, you know, I don't, nobody's there. I don't even have to cook. I'm not <laughs> that's the thing. Nobody's <laughs> asking me what's for dinner. So, and that's the best, that's the retreat. So, and then we can have our new beginnings from there. Exactly. Yes. And so the retreat is designed in a way to refresh, rejuvenate, yes. to reinvigorate our spirits, right. to get it to restore us, to um, to get us back in touch, to center us back to that place of fellowship. You know, um, anywhere you are, it can be a place of worship. Mm -hmm. Anywhere you are, in your car, in your home as you walk the streets, it can be a place of worship. But there's something about coming together at that particular place. Yes. Wouldn't you say so about yes. this? Just, yes, just the atmosphere, the calmness of the environment um, there. And, you know, 
It talks in the Bible, iron sharpens iron. It's so important for women to support one another, to encourage, to be able to let go, to release, to somebody who understands, yes, yes, who yes, gets yes, it, right. who who may have gone through something similar. You're, we're, none of us have gone through anything that's just been totally different, right? never been done before. True. I don't think that exists. True. So we all have each other, and we need each other. And, and it builds a bond of sisterhood mm -hmm. that is so strong, and you release and you refuel by the time you leave, and you can do it. Yes, yeah, you are part of our committee, and you're in charge of the youth and young youth and young adults. Yes, tell us what the plans are for them. The plans for our our little ladies, our baby sisters, um, age, if I'm not mistaken. 13 to 23 is just to, first of all, to let them see the sisters coming together. Because if teenagers and young ladies see the sister, the seasoned ladies coming together, then they will be more apt to do it. There's so much fighting amongst the ladies, amongst the women. We're so bitter toward each other. And I think our young ladies need to see other ladies get together. They need to see the sisters get together and sit down and talk. So what we're going to do is we're going to foster that environment for them. We're going to get give them a chance to sit down and talk amongst each other, to voice their issues, to learn from each other. Youth learn from each other. That's true. A young lady will listen to her friends, let's be honest, quicker than she will her mother. Mm, so we want them to get some positive influences, to ask, be able to ask their questions in a safe environment and to be able to get some points on how to restore themselves and how to renew and the importance of Christ in their everyday life. There's nobody like Jesus. Nobody. Nobody, nobody like Jesus. Would you agree? Yes. Nobody yes. like yes. Jesus. There's a song that says, nobody like Jesus. And so we all want to come together and just be a part of this fellowship and just to talk about that word fellowship for just one minute, our apostle Kevin Dean heads the New Vision of Faith Fellowship. Prof. Dean, would you talk about some of the goals of the fellowship in general? In general, my husband, the wonderful man that he is, Apostle Dean, has envisioned strengthening churches with education, um, with um, imparting knowledge and resources of any type so that we can build up the kingdom of God. Really fervent about the youth and because they're our future generations. And if we don't leave them a legacy, a strong legacy, what are we doing this all for? So we have to begin to pour into churches, build strong churches. And strong doesn't necessarily mean numbers. Exactly. It means strong in spirit. The Bible says when two or three are gathered, there he is, that he has built much with little. It's about strengthening the little. So whichever we come with and however we can go forth and change our neighborhoods, exactly. our cities, our state, our nation, and to the uttermost parts of the world. And isn't that the Great Commission? That's yes, just, it is. Isn't that the Great Commission? Yes. Isn't that what the Great Commission tells us to do is to go, to teach, to baptize. And I like the last part. He says, and I will be with you always, always, even until the ends of the world. So that basically wraps up our conversation today about our upcoming retreat, which is off to August 8th through 10th, Friday evening, Saturday and Sunday morning. We leave about 10 o'clock so that we can get back to Chicago for our Sunday morning services. So I want to thank all of you who were here this evening so that we can talk a little about, a bit about our retreat. And we want to invite all of you to come be a part of this retreat in August. I think you'll be very much uh, amazed and you will leave refreshed, renewed, and reinvigorated in the Lord. God bless you.